Well, I will just keep it going. Um, so what is Qualtrics? Qualtrics is a web-based software that allows you to, the user, to create surveys and generate reports without having any previous programming knowledge. I will say that we're not going to be talking about creating reports in this particular um, session. That will be another session, or you can find it in our, um, our on-demand videos. So just to let you know. Also, why do you want to use Qualtrics? Qualtrics enables you to do surveys, feedback, and polls using a variety of distribution means. And the results can be viewed in reports and can be downloaded. The other cool part about it is that your survey can be distributed um, via a link or a QR code. You want to make sure that you're using Qualtrics from one of the following compatible browsers. Apple, um, app, April. <laughs> I'm already thinking about the end of the school year. Apple Safari, Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, or Mozilla Firefox. Okay. So I'm going to change screens right now. So let me stop sharing. And then just show you, as I promised, how to get access to all tricks. So I'm going to share, reshare my screen. I get a thumbs up from somebody. You can share my that you can see my screen. Awesome. Thank you, Matt. So what you're gonna do is go to faculty resources, research. You're gonna scroll all the way down, go to Qualtrics. And then here you find the on-demand videos and materials. Um, there's some on-demand um, workshops information, the Qualtrics official website. I will say that the Qualtrics website is extremely helpful, as well as um, their YouTube channel. But for us, what we're going to do is we're, where can I use Qualtrics on campus? What you're going to do is you're going to click right here. And I'll log on. Gotta love Duo. Okay, so right now what we're going to do is we are going to create a new survey. So you're going to click on create a new project. And then go to survey. And then get started. You're going to title this. Um, let's title it survey or actually it's going to title it test three because I already have a test one, test two, test three or test one test two and a regular test. We're going to title it test three. Okay, so the first thing I would like to show you is your question type. So right here, we're going to go to our question type and we're going to scroll down and we're going to go to CAPTCHA verification. So as we can see here, it actually tells you what CAPTCHA verification is. Add a CAPTCHA verification to ensure that your respondents are real humans and not a bot. So right here, you can type in a new, um, you can type in, click below to indicate that you are a human. And so what you'll do is just have click this and says, I am not a, a robot. And for when once you're once you're able to publish your survey. Okay. Does anybody have any questions about CAPTCHA? Fantastic. So one of my favorites is text entry. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a new question. So we're going to click on this below. And then we're going to click text entry. And my next, my next question is, 
How old are you? And what we can do is we can actually change this to actually being um, a force response. Here, we can add a validation and we can make it a content type. So number. Let's say that we want the minimum number to be 18 years old, and then maximum, we'll say 100. And that will apply to question two. Does anybody have any questions so far? Great. So the next one I want to put in is add a question. Let's do a multiple choice. So we have two options of doing multiple choice. We can do this, and I'm going to scroll back up. We can either do allow one answer or allow multiple answers. And I'll show you both what they both look like. So I'm going to type in, what is your favorite animal? I'm going to type in dog. Uh, everybody knows I used to once have a turtle. So turtle. And that, if you look here, it says allow one question, or excuse me, allow one answer. The responses are in, um, circular. If I say allow multiple answers, it changes to a square. Now let's say that I want to add more choices to what is your favorite animal. See right here where it says number of choices? I can just increase that. If I want to take it away, oops, just change it from the plus to the minus. You can also change your how it looks. So you can go from vertical to horizontal. list to selection box. But it's really, again, it's up to you, whatever, however you want your survey to appear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to list and I'll have vertical and we'll do allow, we'll do multiple answers because uh, I know there are some folks who probably like more than one type of animal. <laughs> Any questions so far? Fantastic. So I'm going to click on the new add new question. And let's say that I want to do a text graphic. So I what I can do is here I can actually break it up. Um, break up what your the first box or excuse me, the first um, questions maybe maybe you want this to be the introduction. Maybe you want it to to the to the questions. So let's say this is the introduction to your study. And let's say you just forgot to put this in, right? Like your IRB or what have you. What you can do is you can actually move this up all the way up, just drag it all the way up and put it here, right before your captcha. That's fine. But you can also do is hit add block. Add new question, next entry, introduction to block two. So now you've got two blocks, one block here, one block there. I will tell you now where it says default question block, and then where it says block one, that will not appear on your survey. It just helps you to separate 
um, your questions out. So if you click this, the down carrot, if you push it up and then you click here, it just separates your questions for you. And ironically, it also tells you how many questions are in each block as well. I'm going to add, I'm going to go back to my second block here. Um, I'm going to hit add new question. And then let's say I want to do a form field right here. So with the form field, let's say that I want to do, um, let's say, if you would like to follow up. your information. So what you're going to do here name email oops email Let's say I want to edit my validation. Okay, so we've got my name, email, and phone number, but I want to change what this looks like. So our names, let's say that they're going to be long. And for the validation, we're going to have no validation. I always like to go long on the emails because people sometimes have long emails. But for email, you can hit valid email address. And then for phone number, I would probably do medium, valid phone number. Let's say that you want, I don't know, but let's say that you want to do US phone number. So you would just click US phone number. Um, as you can see here, um, these are your choices in this particular um, setup. So US phone number is what you've got. So any questions about how I just did the form field? Fantastic. So I'm going to add one more question type. So add question type. So we've done, I just want to go through what we've done. We've done multiple choice. We've done text entry. We've done text graphic. Um, I'm going to skip over those for right now. Something that I kind of like is the drill down. And what you can do with the drill down, you can either import some choices, um, click group one. Actually put in a question. Um, but or I could spell favorite, that would be nice. Maybe there's a variety of blues. Group two. Reds. Orange. You always force a response here. What I'm going to do now is do publish, click publish. Now, personally, I do not pay attention to the expert review where it says great, they have recommendations. So you can take the recommendations or you can leave like leave it, take it or leave it. Um, sometimes I don't really pay that much attention to it. But publish, publish is like your save. And then I want to hit OK. And then let's preview our 
um, survey. So this is an introduction to your survey. How old are you? What is your favorite animal? Ah, now the reason, who can guess the reason why it came up this way? Anybody? With the red where it says verification failed. Please try again. Well, it beca it's because I didn't actually click on where the, the CAPTCHA. And so now it says select squares with uh, motorcycle. So now I need to click on the motorcycle. I'll click verify. How old are you? Actually, you're 40. I'm 44, so I'm not 45 yet. So let me hold on to that. I'm going to say dog and turtle. Sorry, no offense to anybody who likes cats. And then I can put my name, email, and phone number. So I need to actually go back and probably do redo what I did here so I can actually do a drill down. But this question right here, it comes up as please answer this question because there's a verification on this. So again, that is not my actual Gmail. Sure, why that happened. Let me go back to the survey. Let me, oh, it's drill down. Let me delete the drill down one. I'll give cat people a chance this time. And now you can see I've completed the survey. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, Shad, we accept all animals here. <laughs> Okay, so that's just a quick little introduction to Altrix. Now, the one thing if you hadn't noticed in the survey is if you want to distribute the survey, what you would need to do is click on distributions. Here's the anonymous link. And your anonymous link will appear, okay? If you want the QR code, just click on the QR code and download your QR code and you'll get that for it. It'll um, populate for you. So I do want to say, if there's any ever a time where you are working on a survey and let's say that you are not able to get a hold of me, what you can do is you can actually reach out to Qualtrics yourself. And you can see where it says help. Just click on the help button. Click contact support. I'll send you here. And then, actually, this is this. Click Survey Platform and XM Directory. Click on that. And then where it says this, where it says, hello, I'm the Qualtrics AI Assistant. What I tend to do is say, customer service. This is how I kind of cheat the system. <laughs> Since did you did I answer your question? I'll say no, and then I'll say contact support, and then I'll say phone number, and then what you can do is you can put in your phone number. Make sure it's with the United States, but put in your phone number and your email. Just 
double check where it says, please provide a brief subject line to be to be in your My Tickets table. Obviously, it's not customer support. It would be something else. And then you would click yes. Right now, there's a one less than a one minute waiting time um, for customer support to get in touch with you. Okay. So again, um, that is a way to contact support if it is like midnight or after the hours of 3.30 in the afternoon um, where I am not available. And let's say that you just need, a, you have a question about getting in touch with, um, talking to somebody about Paul Tricks. So, so anyway, um, are there any questions that I can answer for you of anything that we went over so far? Um, there is an advanced Qualtrics um, workshop that, we're gonna, that I'm going to be doing that this semester, that will happen this semester. Um, and we're going to be going over SSOs and let me think, SSOs, calendars, and embedded data. Can you integrate this into Canvas? You cannot integrate it into Canvas. So that's a really good question. Unfortunately, you cannot integrate it into Canvas. That's a completely different, like the license, we, the type of license we have does not do that. Um, I did get a question about, did can they use this with Salesforce because somebody's using it, but was trying to use it with Salesforce. We do not have that type of license either. But what you can do is um, you can add your, go to distributions and then I would, this is just something that I would probably do, is um, go to distributions, copy the survey link and hyperlink it into your messaging in Canvas. So that's a workaround. I hope that's helpful. Any other questions? Um, yeah, so yeah, can Qualtrics make a doodle type survey? Um, so what do you mean like a doodle type survey, Catherine? And you can come off mute. So if you're trying to get a group of people together who don't have Outlook calendar and mm -hmm. agree on a date to meet, Doodle has a way of people can put a bunch of dates in and then the people like vote on which ones are available, not available, or if I have to. Okay. So I would probably use the matrix table to do that. Um and then what you can do is you can change it to the number of statements. So you see how I've changed it to the number of statements. You can allow one answer, or allow multiple answers. Um, right now it's set to a number of scale points, which is two. So I can change that. Here, is that something that you're talking about? Like, yeah, is that something you're talking about? Well, I actually, it's so tiny on my screen. I can't. Oh, really... sure. Let me let me see if I can make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so would you would put like the various dates, like August twenty ninth, right? M August twenty ninth, three p.m. and then. Yep. So oh. let's say you want to do 3 p.m. here. 4 p.m. Like if it was all 3 p.m. Uh -huh. If it was all going to be 3 p.m. Um, for each date. Uh huh. Or you can do 4 p.m. for each date. Nine. I'm just pulling numbers out of my head. Here. Yeah, sure. That's good. It so I would just do, I would do it that way. Okay, and then the results would tell me how many. Oh, you're, 
loaded for each thing? Or? Correct. So if you go to results, or sorry, not results, data and analysis. Right now, there's not going to be anything there because I mm -hmm. haven't mm -hmm. said it. Well, except for the one response that I had. So you can actually see the information here. So you can go to export and import, export data. I'm going to do CSV. So download it may take a minute or not. The only tricky part about doing it this way is it's it's a lot to clean up. So as you can see, I don't know if you can see the Excel file that's pulled up. Um, yeah, I can't. Okay, hold on. Give me a second. Let me stop sharing and reshare. Okay, so it's it's kind of small, um, mm -hmm. but it's it's a lot to clean up. Um, so you can see here that I said cat. Here's my name. What is your favorite animal? How old are you? Um, this one is if you like to follow up here, write your email. So this is my email, and then this is my phone number. So it's just a lot of cleanup work on your end, mm -hmm. um, but you can still pull the information by going to um, data and analysis. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? So I know that, um, you know, like I said before, this isn't point, we're not talking about results or reports or data analysis, but I just want to reiterate that um, you're not going to break, you're not, you can't break um, Qualtrics um, by any means. I, I know that Eric was in a session with me earlier when we were talking about research methods and he said that he's tried, um, so you can't you can't break it. I do what I want to do now um, is, and I, I kind of want to show you a survey that has been completed. Um, and what that looks like. So this is a study that I'm doing currently. And we have our IRB demographic section, um, body changes in swimming, swimming frequency, menstruation history, photos, period in swimming, creative response. So this particular study talks about women who are swimming and um, their experiences while swimming. Um, so if I click on that link below the down carrot, I have the, um, qual the Qualtrics, excuse me, the CAPTCHA, and then I put in a page break to separate everything so it doesn't look like it's constantly running on um, and within the page. And then I have my IRB. And then I have giving of consent, which is a multiple choice um, right here. I'm just gonna push this back up. My demographic information Again, a page break, and I can do a drop down, uh, which is a, a, another choice. That's what actually what I was trying to do with the drill down, not drop down, excuse me, earlier. Um, but that is a choice. This is a way you can also have it look um, in your multiple choice. Again, these questions are text entry. This question is multiple choice. 
And then in another um, in the on-demand videos, we actually talk about skip logic. So you can, in this particular survey, you can skip to the end of the survey. And then let me do this. I will actually scroll back up. I'll show you what the survey looks like. Um, I don't want to click through it because it's an active uh, survey, but this is an, this is what it looks like from I am not a robot from the CAPTCHA. Okay. Yeah. So. But that's just an example of what a survey, a completed survey looks like that has IRB approval. Um, so let me get out of here. Does anybody have any additional questions? I'll stop sharing. I just, I, you know, honestly, what I like to reiterate to folks is to have fun with using Qualtrics. Um, let me just pull up one more slide for folks as we're getting ready to close out. Um, sorry, my mouse all of a sudden stopped working. <laughs> Let me share my screen again. So these are some of the um, some of the recorded, previously recorded sessions on Qualtrics that we have, creating question types, the skip logic and display logic, which we talked about earlier, how to distribute surveys, survey options, and how to download data, Qualtric features to distribute surveys, research methods talk. Also, there's a way to collaborate. You can collaborate with other people on campus. So that makes it a little bit easier. Um, I will say if you're trying to collaborate with somebody outside of campus, it's not that it's difficult to do, but, and it can be done. The problem is that you, if you're the owner of the survey, you can't, um, it's very difficult for the person outside of campus to make modifications to the survey. Okay. If you're interested in booking a consultation, here's the link right here. And then here's the QR code um, for you to book a consultation with me to discuss your survey and we can run through it. And that is all that I have. I do strongly, strongly, please, please, please suggest that you fill out the survey. Um, for the evaluation, the, excuse me, the evaluation for this session. Um, it really helps me figure out what I can do better um, and what more material, what additional materials I can bring to you. Again, I know this is the quick, dirty uh, version of how you can get into Qualtrics, um, but for other questions, you know, definitely consult the on-demand videos. And then of course, come to the advancing Qualtrics um, session later on in the semester. Thank you all so very much. Thank you, Tiffany. Um, I just put the link to the survey in chat and I also put a QR code. You should be able to scan it if you want. Um, once again, I'll just repeat whatever Tiffany said. Please fill out the survey. It really helps us. And thank you again so much for joining. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Mac. <laughs> Thanks, Shed. <laughs>